Ink Ribbon. Revelations was one of the most interesting entries in the series and really did a great job combining the action from the new games with the horror that fans had been craving. And from its humble beginnings on the 3DS, which includes its first game case prints being misspelled as Revelations, all the way to the re-releases on current gen systems, here is my list of the top 10 secrets and easter eggs for Resident Evil Revelations. Number 10 Beta Differences from its first unveiling, the teaser trailer featured a lot of very big differences that were changed in the final version. One huge change was the fact that the game originally featured zombies. In fact, some zombies are actually still in the game's data files. Another change was that Jill and Chris were seen partnering together and even got flooded out of a room as the ship sinks. Also worth mentioning was the appearance of Hunk, who was later changed to the leader of Veltro. Also featured is a scene where Chris and Jill point guns at each other while there seems to be a Chris doppelganger who is just a dummy in the final game. You'll have to kill me to find out. <laughs> and what would you do if you found it? It doesn't matter, because you're all ready. Number 9 Unused Characters There is an unused monster design that was removed and replaced with Rachel Ooze instead. What's interesting about this enemy design is the clothing is almost an exact match for Raymond, suggesting that he may have played a very different role in the game's story. Among some of the other unused creature designs are a yeti-like creature that would have been able to become transparent. There were some other designs, most of which were inspired by sea creatures, but the one that would have been the best enemy to keep in the game is by far the evil spooky crawfish. Number 8 Side Characters This game has an unusually big cast of characters for a video game, with 4 main characters and 7 side characters, not to mention raid mode extras. With all these characters, there are a lot of little interesting tidbits worth mentioning, so thanks to my Patreon supporters, I went and bought the Revelations Complete Works book, which is completely full of not only all the art and concept work, but also features all of the commentary from the designers. So here's what I found within its pages. First is Keith, who is considered a ladies' man and a smooth talker. Just like Chris and Jill, he has survived a lot of dangerous situations, and with his combat history, he was able to quickly rise in the ranks of the BSAA. In his winter outfit, the main motivation for his hood was because the art director was a fan of South Park, specifically Kenny. He also has one of the coolest alternate costumes in the entire series, with this 90s inspired ninja outfit with a conch shell on his side as well as being able to dual wield blades. Though apparently the art director was extremely picky about his tattoos, to the point that none of the staff ever wanted to mention tattoos again while working on the game. Next we have Keith's partner Quint. Unlike Keith, he is a huge nerd as well as a horror movie buff, often using them as reference. The two characters were designed to complement each other's personalities and work really well together. The designers purposely gave him an everyman design as opposed to the typically fit characters you see in Resident Evil. Quint is bald, has a belly, and uses his quirks to stand out. Also, the character designer was asked to give him a slightly larger head to make him look more intelligent than the other BSAA members. Then we have Clive O'Brien, where the goal of the character was to have a very serious, plain-looking man go against a typical action hero appearance of the other characters. In his very early sketches, he was going to be African American, but this was later changed. One of the main reasons for both his appearance and his demeanor was to make both characters and the player like him, which further makes him a surprising pseudo-villain. And it's worth mentioning that his voice actor is Paul Aiding, the voice of Colonel Campbell in the Metal Gear Solid series. He was uncredited for this role, most likely for union reasons. Moving from plain to eccentric, we have Raymond, who definitely gives off some Ashford vibes. Originally Parker's superior, he was known for being very stoic, but also very strong. Not only was he designed to stand out as almost a scapegoat for the audience, but he's also surprisingly clumsy for such an elite agent. Number 7 Easter Eggs in the past, a lot of people have complained that my videos don't contain any actual easter eggs, so here's a whole section just for you guys. Now, this game doesn't have that many, but here's what I found. One super easy to spot reference is the soda machines with the name Trish on them, being a not-so-subtle reference to Trish from Devil May Cry. 
In some areas of the game, you are able to see sharks swimming just outside the boat. The fact that they are just normal, unmutated sharks makes them the only normal sea life in the whole game. Throughout the game, you see various paintings that are actually pictures of locations in Resident Evil 5, including Spencer's Mansion, the underground room with the flowers, and the cliff that Jill ends up tackling Wesker off of. Most guns in the game have generic names, but the magnum with the comically long barrel is called the Pale Rider Gun, which is a reference to the 1985 western movie by the same name. Throughout the game you can scan various things like the environment and enemies. If you scan every character in the game, you will get a unique response from them. Oh, they're rotted to hell. What's the reading say? That I'm one sexy mofo, right? Trying to get to know the real me? Number 6 Unlockables Revelations features a very robust list of unlockables and has a ton of replayability. First is the game modes, including both New Game Plus as well as Hell or Infernal mode depending on what system you're playing on. Next there is the pretty cool unlockable weapons. If you complete the game on normal or higher, you unlock the Hydra Shotgun. Defeating 150 enemies nets you the PC-356 handgun, which has lower stats than the Beretta, but has 5 customization slots, allowing it to become an amazing weapon with the right parts. Next is the PSG-1 sniper rifle, which you get for scanning 15 hidden handprints. And it wouldn't be Resident Evil without an infinite rocket launcher, which can be yours if you complete Infernal Mode. The biggest feature of Revelations is the addition of Raid Mode, which I will just touch on since it's almost an entire game on its own. It also features a whopping 13 unlockable characters as well as a ton of outfits. Among the main ones, which are also usable in New Game Plus, are... Two outfits for Jill, including her Resident Evil 5 outfit and a stylish pirate costume. For Chris, you can get his winter outfit as well as his infamous sailor costume. Keith gets his casual outfit as well as an awesome ninja costume. And you can also play as Rachel in her ooze form. And lastly, Hunk and Lady Hunk are unlockable. One quick note about this, Lady Hunk was originally drawn as a sketch by the designer and it was loved so much that they put her into the game as a raid mode bonus character. If you're playing this on any system other than the 3DS, all of these costumes once unlocked can be equipped during the campaign. Number 5 Rachel When Rachel was first concepted, she was simply going to be a dead body with a key, but the design team liked her so much that they decided to include her as a character. Throughout production, she was used as sort of an archetype for the horror elements of the game. First at the beginning she was screaming and running for her life, then she becomes a monster herself and chases you. She became a bit of an accidental poster child for the game, her creature design is considered a great example of Japanese horror by combining both erotic and grotesque designs which is a staple of Japanese horror stylings. The design team was easily able to implement her design by reworking Jill's wetsuit instead of having to make a whole new character. Number 4 Jessica in Japan only, there was a DVD released called Revelations Report, featuring a video called Jessica's Report, which shows her being interviewed by Excella Gione. The interview takes place days before the events of Revelations, and Jessica gives her opinions on all the characters in the game, revealing that she has extensive knowledge on both Chris and Jill. She mentions that she admires Chris and looks forward to partnering with him so it'll feel like a Hollywood movie. She also says that while she admires Jill's skills, she's not a fan of her honor student attitude. Jessica had by far the most costume designs of any character, and while she may seem like a generic sexy female, her design is a bit deeper than that. The main motif used to inspire her design was instability. She has a cold heart, but she's also very passionate, which is reflected in her seeming to almost enjoy dangerous situations while also handling them with ease. Among her unused costume designs were many variations of hairstyles, hair colors, and outfits. The designers were all middle-aged men, so they brought in the younger female staff members to give input and suggestions on her designs. And if you think her wetsuit is a little bit over the top, the designer said that he is embarrassed every time he looks back on it, so he's right there with you. Either way, it's memorable, right? Number 3 Chris 
One big thing about Revelations is showing how the BSAA was created by Chris and Jill, as well as giving players an opportunity to understand Chris a bit better, since there was such a big gap between Code Veronica and Resident Evil 5. Keeping with his style, rolled up sleeves have become a Chris signature, even rolling up his arctic outfit sleeves in the cold weather. Chris had several costume designs, all of which were some shade of green in keeping with Chris's traditional colors. Though the designer regrets making his arctic outfit so green, since it would defeat the purpose of the camouflage. One of the most infamous outfits in the entire series is Chris's sailor outfit. The designer stated that it was intentionally silly, but also meant as a bit of fan service, and it almost included a handlebar mustache. Number 2 Jill Slightly breaking the mold, Revelations places Jill at the forefront of the story and gives her the opportunity to rescue Chris for a change. The designer really wanted Jill to have a beret since he felt it suited her so well, but the producers rejected this. You can still see this in various unused designs as well as various hairstyles they went through. While her original short hairstyle was considered, they weren't able to include it since Resident Evil 5 takes place immediately after this game which wouldn't be enough time for her hair to grow. Her wetsuit went through several designs and was partially inspired by Gundam's Titan series, specifically in its use of color palettes. Among the features of her suit is a rebreather which allows her to recycle air as well as a BCD or buoyancy control device to allow her to easily float or sink when needed. She has a few unused outfit concepts that the team was really not happy about, including her in a bikini, a sexy magical girl inspired look, and Jill's version of risky business. The designer said that he was worried he might actually get fired after he submitted them to the team, but live and learn. From the costumes that were submitted, the one that was actually chosen was her pirate costume. Now while Leon also had a pirate costume in Resident Evil 6, it was actually a total coincidence, as a separate team was working on that game around the same time. The pirate costume was chosen not only to go with the nautical theme of the game, but also because they felt it added some fun and happiness to the game, especially with the addition of a parrot. And the last thing worth noting about Jill is originally, the scanning mechanic was a pair of high-tech glasses called the Hyperscanner, which wasn't used in the game, but the base model for them can be found in the game's files. Number 1 Development Revelations was originally released in 2012, but actually takes place in 2005, which is between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5. In order to provide more backstory for Chris and Jill as well as help usher back in survival horror elements. Debuting on the 3DS and developed alongside the Mercenaries 3D, it was also Capcom's first time developing for the handheld which led to them creating a downsized version of their MT framework engine, the same engine used to make Dead Rising and Lost Planet. Led by Koshi Nakanishi, who was the game's designer for Resident Evil 5, Revelations was specifically built from the ground up to revive the horror roots of the Resident Evil series while also modernizing it for new audiences. One of the reasons that Revelations feels so unique from a story perspective is that it was heavily inspired by American TV dramas and put an emphasis on having a large diverse cast. It was originally planned to be an episodic story, which we did end up seeing in Revelations 2. There was also an emphasis on casting suspicion on several characters to leave the player guessing who was truly the bad guy. The game was voiced in different languages, which was a big jump for the series. Revelations was released to several systems with some changes, including the removal of both first person mode and gun laser sights. They added RE Net support, new UI, as well as several outfits and characters for raid mode like Rachel and Lady Hunk, as well as a new enemy called the Wall Blister. And lastly was the addition of the Infernal difficulty, which replaces Hell Mode and serves as an arranged mode of the game where items and enemies are moved to new places. The T Abyss virus was created specifically for its ability to react with sea creatures and goes hand in hand with the oceanic theme of the game. Unfortunately, at the end of the game we see Raymond and Jessica preparing to bring the virus to Tricell. What happened after that is unknown. And that is it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something, and again, a lot of this info came from the Revelations Complete Works book, which I will put a link to in the description if you'd like a copy for your own collection. Also, my channel is about to hit 78,000 subscribers while making this video, and that's mind-blowing, so thank you so much for all the support. If you haven't already subscribed and would like to help my channel hit 100,000 subscribers, it would be very appreciated, because I've got a lot more videos like these to make. But until then, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon.
And a very special thank you to my bronze, silver, and gold Patreon supporters. Thanks to you, I can make videos without worrying about demonetization and grow my channel faster.